Oh, snap. You finally making that vision board I told you to do? <sighs> I wish. No, it's a work assignment. You remember how I told you about the third party cookies going away? <sighs> it's like all you talk about anymore. Right. Well, one of the issues is without the third party cookie, it becomes hard for us to know that a person who visits one of our sites is the same person when they visit another one of our sites. Can't you just have them sign in? Only like 30% of our audience signs in. I mean, would you sign into Swifties.com? I would, but all right then. What's all this about? Google has this thing called related website sets that allows website owners to share cookies to connect audiences across the websites that they own. Problem is, there's only allowed to be five websites per set. Doesn't your company own like 20 websites? Yup. So I get to figure out how to break up these websites into groups of five based on how their audiences overlap. But then once those groups of five are set, can't you just link the audiences across those groups? What do you mean? Well, I was reading this article on digiday.com and some publisher was using IP addresses and device IDs as identifiers. So can you connect that information with your cookie so that if someone shows up in another group but with the same IP address or device ID, bam, you got your link. Can I do that? Let's save that question for later. First, let's go over what related website sets are. As kind of mentioned, related website sets are part of Google's privacy sandbox set of proposals for filling some of the gaps left by the third party cookies elimination. See, websites use third party cookies to recognize that someone visiting one site is the same person when they show up on another site, which has created all kinds of privacy concerns that Google is looking to eliminate by disabling third party cookies in its Chrome browser. But a side effect of disabling this cookie based cross site tracking is it inhibits a company from connecting audiences across its own various sites. It's a functionality uh, that was enabled by the use of third party cookies, but it's more internal. It's not necessarily an average advertising tool per se, it is a tool that uh, the proposal at least is to publishers that own multiple domains to maintain functionality across their um, their portfolio of websites. The, the, the example I use is like Airbnb, where they've got a .com, they've got an Australian website, they've got a Canadian website, and each of those looks like a different website because it ends in a different country prefix, but they're all the same company and so they want to be able to say, hey, all my websites are actually the same one. Let me use third party cookies across them so that someone who logs in on one is just automatically logged in on the others. As you said, it can be across companies as well. So um, different properties that Digiday owns could, could all share the same user login and, and share information as well. Related website sets used to be called first party sets. That original name gets at the underlying aim of related website sets. Third party cookies go in a way to prevent people from being tracked by third parties. But someone visiting a website establishes a first party relationship between that site visitor and the website. And if that person visits multiple sites owned by the same company, then isn't that just different variations of the same first party relationship? You wanna have a seamless user experience. You want to enable, if there's a brand out there and they have a, a portfolio of sites that are clearly that brand sites make it easy for the user to be able to jump across one site to the other and save their preferences and have a seamless experience. So first party sets is the technical way that Chrome is enabling that post cookie. Now let's talk about how related website sets enable that connection. First, a company defines a group of websites as being part of a single related website set. One of these websites is the set primary, which is like the anchor site of the group, and the others are set members. Now when a person visits one of the sites in the set, that site drops a cookie on the person's browser to tag them as a unique user. That cookie is stored with the browser. Then when that person visits another site in the group, the second site asks the browser if it can access the cookie stored by the first site. The browser checks if the second site is part of the same related website set as the first site. If it is, then it gives the second site access to the stored cookie. And the process is the same for every other site in the set. Before we go any further, but Chance, are there little fire alarms going off in your head? Like, what's to stop someone from just adding every domain on the World Wide Web to a single related website set? That way they can track people all over the internet, like in the olden times. Yeah, those fire alarms have also gone off all across the industry. Most people that are watching this will be aware of when Apple made similar privacy enhancing measures, and I use that uh, in inverted commas, um, there was the fingerprinting business sprung up around it. So there are those that will have a concern that will be um, vulnerable to similar, similar uh, nefarious practices um, because people can just start to buy up 
uh, aggregate domains and affiliate businesses, and then just say, look, this is all, you know, under, you know, this all adheres to the required specifics of the privacy sandbox. When this proposal was first introduced, there was the, there were a lot fewer constraints around it. And one of the worries the industry had was that it was going to create a, an incentive for companies to own tons of websites because you'd be able to share user identity across all of them. And so it would sort of exacerbate the, the consolidation of, of the web and make independent websites you know, disadvantaged. To limit the potential for related website sets to be co-opted for complete cross-site tracking, Google has instituted a five domain limit. However, this limit only applies to one category of domain. So now we've got to talk about the different categories of domains within related website sets. There are three, service domains, country code top level domains, and associated domains. Service domains are domains that serve some utility to the set primary domain. Basically, these are sites that no one would directly visit, but play some role in the user experience on the set primary domain. These service domains must be owned by the same person or company as the set primary, and must be subdomains of the set primary domain. Country code top level domains are, as the name implies, the country specific versions of a set primary domain, and like with the service domains, must share ownership with the set primary domain. And then there are associated domains. These can be entirely separate domains that are affiliated with the set primary domain, but don't have to share common ownership. Now, can you guess to which domain category the five domain limit applies? Yeah, the one where domains aren't required to share common ownership, associated domains. A related website set can include an unlimited number of service domains and country code top level domains, but there can only be up to five associated domains in a related website set. As a result, companies with more than five owned or affiliated websites will need to Tetris out how they'd like to bundle these sites into sets of five. So I think those publishers have an opportunity now, while the third-party cookie exists, to understand like, what do the users do? Like, do users read magazine A and magazine B, but like they don't read B and C together? And then you group it based on that. I think the other opportunity for publishers is, you know, a lot of the post signal solutions are based on authenticated identity. So if you have, let's say you own 20 websites, and let's say four of those websites have great login rates, but the rest don't, maybe each one of those four becomes an anchor website, and then you put the other four uh, around that for that set. Because to your point, you would need to have multiple of these based on the limit. Uh, and so I think it's a, a publisher should be strategic about where do their users cross over? Because if you also, if you link two websites and the users don't cross over at all, there was no point to linking those websites. The other important thing to know about associated domains is while they aren't required to share an owner like service and country level domains, their affiliation to the set primary must be, and I quote, clearly presented to users. So that's be very apparent to the consumer. And it's not completely clear what that means, but I, you know, I would think if it, it's clear on like the page, hey, this is all owned by company X um, as an example. So maybe a publisher who owns a few magazines, but people know the main publisher name. They could understand, oh, it's all these magazines are actually one publisher and there's just the different interest groups that that publisher is creating um, and publishing content for. So I think, you know, it, it's kind of, it's not a clear definition, um, but it, it seems, you know, as folks submit more and more of these into GitHub um, and we see feedback from Google, I think we'll have a better understanding of like, you know, how clear does it have to be what a brand is and, and how do you represent that to a consumer? Okay, this isn't exactly on par with having to show a utility bill to prove residency, but there is a public ledger that lists related website sets. Each entry includes the domains contained by each set, the rationale for each domain's inclusion, and contact information for the person responsible for the set. That way, I guess people can do the privacy sandbox version of a citizen's arrest by flagging illegitimate related website sets. Although, it's unclear what would come next. I, I'm very curious um, what that enforcement will look like and, and how you do it, because undoubtedly there's going to be a point where someone's like, well, I can tie these two websites together. How do I do it? And they are not in fact related. Um, so how does how does Google protect against that? In the meantime, there are other limits in place. For example, a given domain cannot be included in more than one related website set at a time. And if a domain moves from one related website set to another, the browser has to clear the data from that domain before it can start requesting cookies from the new related website set. Both of which seem to be good limitations. But here's the big question with related website sets. Since related website sets create a way for a group of sites to share cookies and effectively enable cross-site tracking within that group, 
doesn't that create an opening for related websites that's to be co-opted for more extensive cross-site tracking? Like, what's to stop someone from contacting various related website set owners and saying, psst, let's associate this ID with a related website set cookie. So make a server-side call to us anytime that cookie shows up on your sites and pass the ID with their IP address. That way we can build up an ID graph scaffolded atop all these related website sets and cross-site tracking survives the cookie apocalypse. At least until Chrome starts blocking IP addresses, wouldn't that be an option? Yeah, that's one theory that is being discussed uh, in the various GitHub forums, etc., etc., and on LinkedIn posts that uh, the likes of you and I have been tracking. Yeah, you're pr you're probably right. Um, it's probably something that um, companies are companies are looking into and figuring out how to leverage slash abuse, right? It's a good question. Um, and I think one of the things we're going to see with Privacy Sandbox is people are going to push the limits. Uh, and I think we'll probably see additional uh, rules and guidelines come out um, because, you know, you can kind of read the, you know, related websites and you kind of, okay, it makes sense, like what Google is trying to achieve. And then to your point, you, you immediately start thinking, oh, well, what will people do with this technology um, beyond what Google wants you to achieve even potentially bad for the consumer? And I mean, this is what happened with Flock, right? Originally, flocks were going to be available through Privacy Sandbox, and then um, some really clever people, uh, maybe not acting in the best interest of consumers, figured out how to fingerprint a use of the flocks. Now flocks are gone. Now, you're right, you could take that information that you know and say, this person's been to these five sites, here's all the information I know about them visiting to those sites, and you could use that as an ingredient into uh, some, some new identity graph that you're making. You could do that today using just first party cookies and information you have there as well. So related website sets would provide some more information. It would, it would help tie some things together, but it, it's, not, it's not a problem that's unique just to related website sets. Mm -hmm.